So here's lesson four, understanding topography inputs in Russell 2. And um, this is another core set of terms and concepts that I want to convey to you. Uh, the, the idea, same as previous lessons, our original RK LSCP equals A formula is Russell 2's foundation. When we look at the LS, which I, I call a single factor, um, whoops, hang on, sorry folks, Had it in the, I call Russell 2 LS a, a single factor. Some people might break into two factors, but it's a topography factor. And you know, in this conceptual diagram of a profile calculation, it's over here in the actual screen for a profile calculation. It's right here, step three, right? That's where you put in your LS. Um, that's where you put in your topography values and Russell 2 will then use that in the erosion calculation. So, you know, what do these terms mean? How, how does this help us understand erosion or whether we're using Russell 2 or not? We're gonna dig into this LS topography factor, slope length and steepness. Um, so take home points, okay? The LS values are a measure of the topography's vulnerability to erosion, all right? L is the length of the modeled area or hill slope in feet, and S is the steepness in percent. And we'll go, we'll go into that a lot more. But it's pretty obvious, you know, as a slope gets longer or steeper, your sheet and rill erosion risk is going to go up. And slope in particular is a major driver of erosion risk in the real world and in Russell too, right? Um, if it's steeper, we're gonna have more transport energy. Um, even if the, um, the main detaching agent, you know, I've, I've told you on these, on these side slopes, the main detaching agent is raindrop impact. Nevertheless, the steeper it is, much more likelihood that, the, that what's been detached by raindrops is gonna get moved, okay? And in fact, the slope has much greater influence on Russell 2 results than the slope length. So one of the guys who created Russell 2, this guy, um, Renard, and some of his other co-authors in this handbook of erosion modeling, I found this at some point, that a 10% error in slope length gives you a 5% error in computed soil loss, but a 10% error in slope steepness gives you a 20% error in computed soil loss. So you, know, you wanna pay attention to steepness um, you know, not at the expense of length, but that's really a steepness is an important factor in Russell 2 and in the real world. So LS is different from other Russell 2 inputs in some important ways, okay? The LS values that you put in, they're, they're the only inputs that you don't select from pull down menus in the database. You actually just type them in. They're the only thing you type into Russell 2. Um, so like location, you've got all these menus of different counties with climate data that's already been loaded. Soil the same. Management, you have to build managements, but all using components that are already in the database. Slope length here and steepness, you, you type in the number yourself, right? So you have a great deal of flexibility in what you put in. And then, um, you know, unlike the other things I showed you, like your R factor and your K factor, you never see the actual factor values that go into the erosion equation. Like all that happens behind the scenes. So the only thing that you'll see, unless you go into some advanced windows, which um, I would have to show you how to do, um, you're only gonna see the length and steepness. And so that that goes, is fed into the black box in terms of, of the actual LS value, right? That, that, that goes into the computation, but that's okay. Um, the selection of your LS often requires more judgment than any other input. So the question, a big question, we already kind of got a sense of some of the, these questions we looked at soils, but which slope is representative of the area to be modeled, right? And once I've picked a representative slope, how do I measure it? So I'm gonna go over some of that. And you may also you know, need some to exercise some judgment after the calculation is complete in terms of explaining, well, why does my soil loss you know, look the way it does? But let me, let me start out with this first key concept, okay? Just a simple picture. I want you to imagine this is probably, this may not be in Virginia, doesn't really matter uh, where it is. 
the point is the same. We got this nice field here, a single Russell two calculation, right? It's, it's not gonna model the whole field. Russell two is a very sophisticated tool, but it can only model the one slope. If we're doing a single calculation to represent this area, we have to tell it which of these slopes we select to represent the field. And all we tell Russell is a length and a steepness, okay? So the judgment is in figuring out how to take this landscape and translate it into this value. Now you could potentially break this landscape into different areas and then do different computations. But if you're gonna do one computation in Russell 2, this is the challenge you have. And it's another thing that, another thing that makes the LS input unique is actually we have an entire Virginia NRCS guidance document devoted specifically to helping you make these LS determinations. And that's what I'm gonna focus on for the rest of this, this time um, because it, it's such a, an important question, especially for newer folks. Um, and so one of, if you don't remember anything else from this lesson, get your hands on this document, okay? And again, where do you get it? Field Office Technical Guide Section 1 on Erosion Information. Um, and if you use find this document right at that first entry into under erosion information, you can find this erosion resources index and you leaf through it, you get the hyperlink, go straight to this document, right? Note the date, 2013. So this isn't new. Um, and uh, but I think I think a lot of it is still just as applicable as it was almost 10 years ago when I last updated it. So let's walk through the steps right in this document, right? Um, the first thing you're going to do is you identify areas of the field to which Russell 2 applies and doesn't apply. So I'm going to first try to explain this in words. I'm going to shift over to pictures. You divide the landscape like this, right, into three kind of areas, hillsides and sloping areas subject to overland or sheet flow, right? These are the areas where sheet and rill erosion occurs or could occur. So this is Russell 2 applies here. But as we kind of covered in previous lessons, you know, there's some, some areas where Russell 2 doesn't apply. One of them is flat areas subject to deposition. So yeah, water might flow in a sheet here, it might not be concentrated, but, but erosion doesn't happen here, right? These, these are not the parts of the landscape where Hugh Hammond Bennett and all those researchers, you know, did their research, right? These are flatter areas subject to deposition. We also want to break out swales, drainage ways, ditches, anywhere where runoff concentrates, right? Because this is where gully erosion happens and Russell 2 doesn't apply here. So this guidance document that I mentioned, right? It has these graphics in it and these are drawn from, uh, from a book um, that, that NRCS or USDA published. And, and um, I think they're really useful. So let's take a closer look at this. You need, you need the first step in deciding, you know, how to, characterize the landscape and, and tell Russell too what's what's out there in terms of landscape and topography is you divide this landscape up. So you can see it's it looks like a relatively small area we're going to characterize, but you know we've got some swales, right? Um, that can concentrate water. We got some swales. We also have this depositional area here. Um, so the way I like to present it is, you know, I go to I take my map you know, I draw a boundary. This is the area I want to represent. I'm not worried about the trees. Um, in black, I've kind of blacked out the areas that are subject to um, concentrated flow and gully erosion. And then um, I've also got this hatch marked area. Russell 2 doesn't apply here either. Like we don't have to worry about this because this is really a depositional area. So it's the area that's in white here, right? This is the area where Russell 2 applies a side slope subject to sheet and rill erosion, where primary form of detachment is gonna be raindrop impact if my soil is bare. Okay, so that's that's good. Now, next question. Okay, which which of these slopes are we, is gonna be representative of the area to be modeled? Okay, because for example, if I say, well, this slope G is representative, well, that's not anywhere near steep, let's say as a D, right, or F, right, so we've got to choose that, so, so this is the next step, the guidance document gives you advice on this next step, pick a slope that's representative of the areas in the field where Russell 2 applies, so you start by getting to know the field, right, start with a map, but what we recommend, the old school way to do it, is you walk a lot, and you do what we call shooting slopes, right, and you, you, you know, short pencils better than long memory, you take, you sketch on the map, you know, where you shot your slopes, and 
I'll tell you about shooting slopes in a moment here, but basically as you walk the field and assess these different slopes, you pick one or more representative slopes and you want to make sure you account for and protect the steeper areas. And there's a couple of different ways to do that. But remember that if you pick kind of the average slope, well, you may want to plan plan for the worst, because even if, if you pick a, a slope that's kind of intermediate, if you plan your erosion treatment or your erosion prevention for the intermediate slope, then the, the steeper slope is going to be underprotected. And I recommend you keep it real. You pick an actual slope and it's real measurements and you don't create an imaginary slope based on calculated averages. And the advantage of that is that if you ever have to go back and say, well, this is my, I defend my choice of, of, of you know, this LS value, you can say, well, you know, you can tell me you don't agree with F being representative, but it's, the, it's what I picked as being representative and I can actually measure, you know, slope F. So, you know, once you've picked your representative slope, let's say it's F in this case, you know, then you just have to know how to properly measure it or shoot it, right? And so this is what you've actually been doing as you walk the field, you've been shooting different slopes. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about this diagram in a moment, but this is like riding a bicycle and there's probably limited value in putting these words on the screen. Um, we, we are gonna do some trainings on this in person in 2022. Um, and, uh, you know, the process though, is that you basically go to the top of the hill, you, you envision it's the slope is smooth, bare tilled, no micro topography. And you, you decide, well, this is the starting point. Maybe I'll flag it, right? That's what it says here. Flag the starting point where you think erosion or runoff, I should say runoff would begin. Maybe it's not right at the peak, but it's down here. And you just start walking downhill. You follow the path that water would follow. And sometimes that's not obvious, you know, but it takes some practice and you stop where sheet and rill erosion theoretically would stop. So in this case, you know, this is a depositional area here, right? At some point and you're walking downhill, you're going to say, well, I don't think erosion would continue past this point. I think this is where, you know, soil would start to drop out of the runoff um, and be deposited. So, you know, this would be your slope here, your roading portion. You also run into some cases where your side slope ends where concentrated flow begins. So this is, this is a very you know, easy picture here, right? But, but um, in, in the real world, it takes some judgment and that's why it takes practice. But and once you've defined where your slope begins and ends, again, which takes practice um, and, and experience, then you measure the length, but you can do that with a measuring wheel or pace it off. You also measure the steepness and we recommend measuring your steepness using an instrument like a clinometer, because as I told you, steepness is more crucial for correct answers in Russell too. And so that's, you know, that's basically what I just, told you in words, right, is, is uh, you're going to figure out where these begin and end points are. And that is, there's a, there's a bit of an art to it. But the one thing that is crucial is, is the judgment, because if you characterize this field as having a, a less extreme slope, um, then some of the slopes will, you know, if you plan for G, well, B is going to definitely be underprotected. And so that's a big part of your applying judgment as a planner and not a robot to this LS selection process. I've got some practical top 10 tips in that document. Just hit them real quick, walk the field. The greener you are, the newer you are to this, the more you should walk, the more complex the topography, the more you should walk. Don't agonize over any one slope, right? You're better off shooting lots of slopes and getting a sense of what's out there than debating a single slope to death. You can subdivide the field. Look, if the field's got some flat parts and steep parts, why do you have to feel like it's got to be represented by a single Russell 2 calculation? Split the field and then, you know, plan for and assess the steeper part and the shallower part separately. I mean, that's what planners should do. And finally, get out of the office, right? You, this is your opportunity to go see the different forms of erosion that Russell 2 does not account for, gully erosion, tillage erosion, um, even wind erosion, you need to verify that what you know of the farmer's management is, is real. Um, get out of the office. Look, in this Russell 2 related attributes table that I showed you in a previous lesson, how to, how to get from soil web soil survey, someone put in slope length for each of these soil map units. Don't use that, okay? 
uh, you can get your K factor from the book, but your slope length should be determined in the field. And um, that's, that's our policy and that's our recommendation. So I just helped you answer this question. Um, here's our, our interactive review question for this lesson. It asks you about the official guidance document I just described, making LS determinations for basic Russell II calculations in Virginia. Um, and based on what I told you already, you should be able to pick the right answer here. Okay, you guys are doing a great job. Most of you um, are getting the answer correct. So I'll just start going through it. This is wrong. I never said, and that document never said, there's no reason to visit the field if you have good maps. You want to get out of the office. You want to visit fields. It may be hard to do in our current workload environment and depending on the weather, there is a good reason to visit the field, even if you have excellent topography data because there's other stuff you need to see as a planner and not a robot. So that's not right. So it can't be all of the above, okay? All right, well, let's keep going. I told you, your time is better spent walking and shooting multiple slopes and debating to death the merits or measurements of a single slope. That's true. Get to know the topography. Um, that will help you pick the representative slope and understand you know, what to model. It is indeed more important to get slope steepness right than length. Steepness has a greater influence on Russell II results and on erosion probably in the real world. And then I might not have emphasized this, but this is also correct. Pick the average, but plan for the worst is a traditional approach. So you could say, yeah, the field, you know, I'm going to say the field is 5%. It has some slopes that are maybe up to 8% in it, but I'm going to call it 5%. And, and you can do that, but we, we strongly recommend that you plan for the worst. So, so plan uh, with those, those steeper areas in mind, and that means that this is the correct answer. We had an excellent... Um, 84% of you picked the correct answer. And thank you for playing today. So that takes us to lesson five, understanding our crop management factor 